Hi, this is Miss Narka again. In this video, we're going to learn about enthalpy of reaction. We're going to know how to solve for the enthalpy of reaction given a real chemical reaction. But before that, let's review some essential concepts that we need to understand before we go through the problem solving process. We know that the enthalpy change the, that accompanies a reaction is called either enthalpy of reaction or simply the heat of reaction. And sometimes we usually represent that enthalpy of reaction as delta H. And because delta represents the change, and so to, to um, be able to solve for the change of the enthalpy in a reaction, so Rxn, so the change in enthalpy in a certain reaction, it is always the final minus initial. And because the final outcome of a chemical reaction will be designated by the products, so we can simply say delta H products minus, and of course our initial are the reactants or the starting substances, so we subtract it by the delta H of reactants. So to get, again, to get the delta H of the reaction or the change of enthalpy in a reaction, we simply subtract products minus reactants or simply final minus initial. And to represent, we know that we have to represent the enthalpy when we have a certain chemical reaction. And we know that in a chemical reaction, we represent it through a chemical equation. So the balance chemical equation that show the associated enthalpy change is what we call a thermochemical equation. So again, a thermochemical equation is simply a balance chemical equation. So balance means you see coefficients written before the substances that will ensure that we have the number of elements of that atoms left and right to be equal. So that's your balanced chemical equation. And after writing your balanced chemical equation, you're going to see values on the right side, usually written here on the right side, of the delta H. So you will see a value with a negative or positive sign, and that will tell us that it's either exothermic or energy-releasing reaction or endothermic if it has a positive value. So in this case, I am showing you two thermo thermochemical equations. So this is how we're going to read this particular thermochemical equation. So we have when two moles of hydrogen gas reacts with one mole of oxygen gas in order to form two moles of water gas at constant pressure, the system, this reacting system, releases the value of 483.6 kilojoules of heat. So releasing is a representation of the negative. On the second thermochemical equation, we're going to read it this way. When two moles of water gas or water vapor is decomposed to form two moles of, what, of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas, the system will have to absorb, positive, 483.6 kilojoules of energy. So if you look at these two equations, it's just the reverse of the other. So the first one is exothermic, which is the formation of water. But the second one is we reverse the process. Water becomes a reactant and these two here become your products. And because we're reversing it, so our delta H will just be the opposite sign, but the value of the energy will be the same. And so that's 483.6 kilojoules. So that's how your thermochemical equations look like. Now, before we proceed to the problem solving of this, we have to consider the following essential information when we analyze thermochemical equations. The first one, the coefficient, which are the numbers that you see 
before the, the chemical substance or before the chemical formula represent the number of moles. Not the number of molecules, but the number of moles. The second, the physical states of reactants and products must be included in the thermochemical equation. What do you mean by physical state? So you see these tiny little letters that are placed after every chemical formula. So G for gas, L for liquid, S for solid, and AQ for AQs. So those physical states have to be written in a thermochemical equation because they're useful later on to get the values of enthalpy that we're going to look for. Third, change in enthalpy is always directly proportional to the number of moles of substances. So whatever is the quantity of the number of moles, the change in enthalpy is always dependent on that. Don't worry if you don't understand it yet. We're going to illustrate that later on. And lastly, delta H is usually not affected by changing temperature. So even if changing temperature will be stated in the problem, don't worry about it. The calculations will be the same. Change in temperature will never affect that. So I will stop this video for a while. I want you to pause this video and go over the essential concepts. And please write all these notes down on your notebook because I don't want you to forget this before you proceed to the problem solving please once you're done with this you can proceed to the next set of video thank you